Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Good morning. Well, we ran a story today about the fact that a one million ton cod stock is potentially returning to Newfoundland. Uh, George Rose, who's the most experienced uh, scientist uh, studying northern cod, uh, said that in two years uh, the stock has already increased from 135,000 to 200,000 tons. And the latest surveys show an excellent spread of uh, age groups and year classes with a huge number of young cod coming into the system. The fact of a return of cod has huge implications uh, for Newfoundland, but it also has implications for fishery management around the world. For Newfoundland itself, uh, an ecosystem that is more favorable to cod is less favorable to crab and shrimp. We've already seen this year, uh, or for several years, the decreases in uh, shrimp quotas in Newfoundland, and this year they're hitting especially hard. Uh, it's also likely that the crab stocks will not maintain at their current level as the cod uh, become more abundant and more aggressive. But the other thing this means is that Newfoundland cod has kind of been the poster child for the um, environmentalist sustainable seafood movement. And one of the things that it's kind of done is allowed many of the environmentalists to claim that uh, actions in the ocean were irreversible and that once uh, a fishery has collapsed uh, it's never going to appear again. But what we're really seeing in the ocean is a more sophisticated understanding of long-term uh, changes in the uh, ocean regime and the temperature regime and the way the currents are working and there's some well-known phenomena in the uh, North Pacific for example uh, where there is a, a noticeable shift from a, 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 a regime that's friendly to sardines to one that's not. And what we're seeing in the Atlantic is the resurgence of a regime that's very friendly to cod. It started, of course, in the Barents Sea and in the Northeast Atlantic, but it's come right across to Greenland and now into Canada and the Northwest Atlantic. And it's going to change the fisheries dynamic. And I think that it really is important to recognize that we need to think about our fisheries in sort of long-term waves of sustainability and that a given environment as it changes is going to change the type of fish species that it hosts. This has an important lesson for uh, environmental groups arguing about seafood sustainability because it really points out that the apocalyptic idea that there is a doom, that, that fisheries are doomed, that they're never going to be back, that the oceans are going to be less productive today than they were a hundred years ago, uh, is simply not true. Instead what we're seeing is a, a series of changes uh, in, the, in the ocean and in the viability of various fisheries and some of those changes are going to be surprising, some of them might be positive, some of them might be negative, but in this climate it really makes no sense to talk about a apple, a, apocalyptic black and white vision of fisheries as being uh, uh, total failures or total successes. Instead, we've got a very dynamic ocean environment and that's nothing is going to say that more than the comeback of Newfoundland cod. What are the implications if we do get two million tons of cod uh, being able to be caught throughout the world. This uh, rivals uh, the landings of Alaska Pollock. Uh, one of the implications I think might be a resurgence in fresh cod uh, taking market share from uh, things like fresh tilapia and fresh salmon. Uh, another thing might be uh, a re-evaluation of the economics of certain types of farmed fish. One of the things about uh, very uh, successful wild fisheries like uh, pollock and cod is that it's very efficient to harvest them in extremely large quantities and it can be done uh, very uh, uh, cheaply uh, when the fisheries are abundant and, and managed in, in, such, in a good way. So we're not really through with the uh, thinking through the relationship between wild caught fisheries and farmed fish. Um, there are changes that are going to increase the availability of certain types of wild-caught fisheries 
and in a sustainable seafood regime, these things are going to be very beneficial. In Lexington, Mass., this is John Sackton. Today's SeafoodNews.com video was brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit WildAlaskaFlavor.com.